Hello everyone and welcome back to day 23 of Bitwise where we complete, uh, where we implement the uh, complete hard hardware software stack for a simple computer from scratch. Um, so last time I had intended to start uh, getting into the coding for uh, our initial kind of reference tool chain for RISC-V, um, but the way it shook out, um, we ended up covering, uh, spending most of the time just covering the uh, the different instructions in uh, the RISC, uh, the the core 32-bit uh, integer instruction set of RISC-V uh, and didn't get to the coding. And in hindsight, I think that was necessary to do, but it also meant that I felt um, maybe it didn't get done what I wanted to get done. So in order to kind of readdress that balance, I decided um, to just get right into the coding today without any real preliminaries, um, except the following kind of administrative note, I guess. Um, as we're shifting topics now from, uh, at least for now, working on the compiler to, to working on some of the RISC-V toolchain, um, I, I had been wanting to cover ongoing work, uh, that, like basically making sure that uh, code I was checking in was being covered at some level of detail in the on-stream coverage. Um, but I'm realizing, uh, based on the last few sessions, that um, it makes it hard to fit in the ostensible main topic. Uh, of the stream and give that appropriate time and focus. So um, for now, I'm going to de-emphasize that and not really talk about uh, commits that are not related to, um, to the ostensible main topic that we're working on in a given week or month. Um, and then hopefully once I get time to work on articles, which I'm planning to take a week off to work on that soon so I can kind of get that bootstrapped. Um, if there's stuff I want to cover that's related to the compiler or other past topics where there's still work going on, but it's not something I want to spend much time on on stream, I will make sure that's covered in the articles so people can read that, but it won't take uh, take up stream time at least. So um, just to, uh, to address uh, that change structurally. Um, so last time we covered a bunch of, if, if, basically all of the instructions, and I talked about the rationale of certain aspects of the instruction encoding. Um, and let's see here. Um, and so I thought today, um, let, let me first uh, say a, a tiny bit about what tools we'll be working on in the first wave of implementation here. Um, the, 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 tool, the, two, the two tools that you could argue are kind of essential is some kind of assembler and some kind of simulator. Uh, the simulator is the one that would actually be simulating the execution of a machine, um, but then you also need to generate uh, machine code for that, um, for a binary image for that machine to inter to execute. And um, so there's you potentially a chicken and egg uh, problem there if you implement both of those yourself. Um, the plan I'm planning, the, the the plan I'm plan, the plan I'm planning to pl plan, blah blah blah, <laughs> the plan uh, of attack that I'm uh, that I'm going to be using is to basically write um, that cluster of toolchain components in a fairly um, uh, integrated way, I guess, where uh, a lot of the data structures are common between them. And so, for example, um, there will be a common function for doing instruction decoding. In other words, going from a byte stream, uh, what is it? Instruction de uh, decoding is going from a byte stream to a decoded instruction. Encoding is going from uh, uh, an instruction and a sort of abstract representation to the byte level representation that can be put into memory. Um, and I plan to make those basic functions and those uh, common data structures uh, be used throughout, uh, you know, both the assembler, the disassembler, the debugger, um, and the simulator. And um, this will mean that hopefully the code will end up having a very kind of pseudocode reference-like feel to it. Uh, it does mean certain compromises maybe in performance, but um, especially for the simulator, for this kind of simulator, uh, maximum performance isn't really uh, a foremost goal. Uh, we will write other simulators that will be focused more towards performance, um, but this is going to be a reference simulator that will kind of define in a way that mirrors the specification, the official specification quite closely will define the behavior. Um, and so it's going to be easy to extend and um, hopefully very readable as a kind of executable specification of, of a RISC-V machine. So that's kind of my thinking on that. But with that out of the way, um, let's actually let's actually start, um, uh, start on that. Um, I'm just going to unload these other projects. 
so that um, they don't get recompiled when we're working on our new thing. Um, I guess even this. So let's just make sure that compiles and runs. Um, sorry, my, it feels like my fan is going into the mic. I'm just trying to move it out of the way. Um, okay. Right, so we, we have this code in here. Um, so just to, to remind folks, uh, and I guess we can actually use, so uh, this chapter was the one we looked at last time. This is sort of a section-by-section uh, -section walkthrough of different things. But if you want the overview of some of the instructions, not just the core instruction set, but uh, the extensions, you can go to the instruction listing in the back. Uh, and it has an overview that's maybe more useful once you already have a, a broad idea of, of what's in there. So you can see um, there's uh, here here's the opcode map. So you can kind of see how um, the opcodes are broken down into different classes. Um, and uh, if you look at RV32i, so this is the base 32-bit integer instruction set, um, you can see the, um, the different instructions. Um, well, first off here, you can see the different uh, instruction formats. We covered these last time in detail. And then you can see the different instructions here, uh, what their various um, kind of opcode prefix bits are and uh, function bits and where their fields are located. Um, so we're probably going to be referencing this kind of thing in the back um, more so than the uh, the one we covered in, in the chapter we covered last time, just because the organization here is more useful for what we're doing. Um, but um, the uh, the um, the structure I have in mind for uh, for this stuff is that basically, if you look at uh, you know in these instructions, um, many of them have uh, you know, a source register, uh, two source registers, up to two source registers, RS1 and RS2, and a destination register, and uh, an immediate field. The immediate fields are kind of spread out, and the actual interpretation of them as mathematical quantities uh, varies a little bit, depending on, you know, um, there's basically 12-bit immediates and 20-bit immediates, uh, and they're intended to be sign extended and so on. Um, but uh, for the decoded representation, which is sort of the abstract representation of an instruction, we assume that all of these things have already already been unpacked, and in the case of the immediates, they have already been sign extended into their full width, so that downstream from that, we don't have to worry about the uh, the encoding. And so um, we're going to have some kind of uh, struct that represents a decoded instruction, and so um, there's going to be an opcode. Um, which represents, uh, you know, kind of an abstract opcode, not what not, not what they call an opcode here, uh, and maybe I'll call it actually op rather than opcode just to avoid confusion. Um, and so the op will be essentially like a label, like these labels over here. Um, and then we're going to have uh, up to up to three registers, uh, RS1, RS2, and, and RD, which is the re uh, destination register. Uh, and then we're going to have a um, um, an immediate field, and the uh, the ops are going to be essentially what we have over here. So I'm just going to do a copy and paste so we can fill them in. Um, let's see here. What's the easiest way to do that? Um, what is the easiest way, I wonder? Um, let me just type them out by hand. This is actually not helping. Um, so there's LUI, load upper immediate, AUIPC, add upper immediate to program counter. Jump and link, jump in and link register, branch if equal, branch if not equal, uh, branch if less than signed, branch if uh, greater or equal signed, 
branch if less than unsigned, branch if greater than or equal unsigned, load byte, and this is a signed load, load half word, load word, and then the um, the unsigned zero extension versions of those uh, byte and half word loads, uh, and then store byte, which uh, because they're storing directly into a memory slot of the right size, these are not doing any extension, right? Um, then there are the um, the immediate uh, LU instructions. So add uh, set if less than set if less than unsigned with an immediate x or i or i and i uh, left shift right shift logical right shift arithmetic add subtract and these are now the um, the non-immediate register register versions of those same things sll slt sltu xor srl sra or and fence fence i these are for uh, memory model stuff e call e break these are basically um, this is like the syscall instruction and e break is like the software breakpoint instruction so if you think of int3 conventionally on x86 is like a software breakpoint this is the same kind of thing um, and then we have these csr control status register read modify write instructions so there's uh, csr register write uh, i can't remember is it read and set and read and clear Let's see if we're doing bit things let's see here w s c and then n three immediate variants so um this is basically going to be yeah our um our uh, version of this i'm going to start counting at one just so we can detect a zero value if, if we don't fill it in um um boom 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 and then we need uh some register uh, value and we're just going to use an u and eight for that so this is uh in risk five you have up to 32 registers so that's a, a five bit field but we're going to encode it in a uh, eight bit uh variable uh, or eight bit uh, uh yeah eight bit uh, variable and then we will just ensure when we decode it that we will always make sure that the upper th three bits of that eight bit uh location uh, eight bit value are, are zeroed out um, and for Word, we're going to use a uint um, a uint 32, and this is true even though uh, these are usually sign extended when they're decoded. But um, we're going to basically keep everything as uints, partly because C uh, C defines uh, overflow signed overflow in, in a unspecified way, and some kind of, sometimes compilers actually exploit it. So I'm going to try for this stuff to keep it as uints, and then if we need to do things that are explicitly signed ops, I'm going to be very explicit about converting that at the point where we're doing the operation so that uh, the the actual storage type is uh, is unsigned. Um, so let's see if that compiles. It looks like it did. Um, and so um, basically, and I'm not, I'm not sure if we're going to have this exact uh, function signature, but you can imagine now if we have a um, and, and this may need to be extended to deal with like uh, bounce checking and error checking or whatever. But let's just do a very simple version. Uh, actually, I guess normally I would do this with a buffer. Um, let's do one that just takes the 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 and we can change this later um if if you if you just take this directly which is just the raw data and you get back an instruction um for now i'm just going to return nothing uh, and then similarly for the encode you would um you would take the instruction um and you would return the the data and uh we may change this from being return oriented to passing a destination pointer or something like that. But for now, let's just uh, stub it in like this. So uh, the job of these functions is basically to to implement the, the encoding we see here. And so um, let's uh, let's start with the decode. 
So um, if you uh, if you take the data and you look at the um, and so let's introduce some some constants here just to make it more uh, explicit. So here are seven bits, and so um, well, maybe I should. Hmm, do I want to just encode it? 32 bits. Maybe I should do that just to make it very explicit. So this is 4, 8, um, 16, 24, 32. This is a lot. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Um, yeah, actually, let's do this because even though it's very long, um, you can at least see the uh, you can see the fields very strongly if we line them up. Um, so let's do this. Um, so this is, uh, let's see, five. I don't know if I like this actually. Um, I guess this is actually also RD. You know what? I think this is too error prone with with lining it up. Even though it's kind of nice, you can see the layout directly. Um, so let's just do uh, do it arithmetically. Um, so I'll just do it like that. And then for this, I will say uh, you have. Uh, you have five bits, and maybe I'll just call this like rec mask sort of generically because it's always five. And then I will say shift this over to uh, by seven bits. And then um, I guess 15. and 20. Um, let's see here. Um, and then there's some other masks that are probably useful, and we might as well just fill them in right now. So there's the Funk 3 mask, which is 3 bits, um, and we want to shift that over to position 12. Um, and there is funct 7 mask, and there are seven of those. And we want to shift that over to position 25, it looks like. Um, Let me just see if there's anything else that pops out. Some of these immediate app masks are a little more specific, I suppose. Um, maybe I'll just make this an alias. This is the shift amount mask for these immediate shifts. This is a nice trick. Um, when you're shifting by an immediate, um, you uh, you know it's a 32-bit up to 32 bits, right? And so you have five bits uh, from the number of registers, and it so happens that at least in the 32-bit instruction set, uh, the number of registers matches the number of bits, which is convenient. So that's not true in for the 64-bit instruction set, uh, but uh, I, I believe actually can't remember, but maybe in the 64-bit instruction set, there's wider shifts in the immediate or not. I mean, you can always do multiple immediate shifts uh, if you want to synthesize a wider than 32 shift. Um, but yeah, this is a nice kind of overloading of that field. Um, all right. Um, there's some other stuff here. I don't think we're going to be implementing fence and ifence. Um, this is for some memory ordering stuff. Um, 
those are just going to be no ups for us because we have a very simple memory model like it's a software implementation um so i think that's probably enough to get started um so yeah we have and i want to i think i want to make this very clear what these types are Um, so first we have the opcode. And, um, the lowest three bits, I believe, are always fixed, um, for this part, for, for this, uh, base instruction set. You can see they're not mentioned here. So zero up, or I guess maybe the lowest two. Let's see. Yeah, they're always one one. Um, but it's not necessarily clear that in a software implementation we would want to. Um, exploit that maybe let me think about that i mean it would be it depends on like you kind of would like to both to simplify the code and to simplify the uh the actual well to, to improve the performance you would probably want to um reduce the amount of bits you're branching on but um Maybe we don't have to do that for now. Um, so we could just directly uh, branch on these. And we want to have some sort of default clause. Um, for now, we'll just put it like that. It'll it'll need to mark uh, mark it as a legal instruction, uh, and actually maybe this is uh, maybe I will use that slot as being a legal a legal op. Um, all right. Um, So the so, so the so, so uh, the opcode bits here are not they're not unique they, they don't fully describe the instru the operation because uh, you can see for a lot of these like all of these uh, branch and compare instructions they have the same opcode and then you have to look at this func three field in order to further disambiguate them um, so there's a question of how best to do that sort of staged decoding um, but let's just do something uh, straightforward which is a nested switch. So um, this could probably be improved, but um, uh, I don't want to get stuck in thinking too much about that right now. So um, in this case, so let's do, uh, this is LUI. Um, and actually let's, uh, let's do it like that. So, um, we have something here, and then we fill in the fields in each of these cases. Um, so for this, it's LUI, and um, I think what we do is we always we always fill in um, we always fill in the fixed fields based on the masks. So they get filled in regardless of whether it's meaningful for that specific instruction. There's no harm in doing that, um, and we don't really. We might as well move that out of the the branches for now. So uh, RS1 is going to be data RS1 mask. Um, and maybe we'll do it like this. Like we can just put it in here. So RS1 is data uh, RS1 mask. RS2 is data RS2 mask. 
rd is data rd mask um, and just do that as an initialization. Um, and then we can do this. Uh, and then we fill in um, I guess we can just fill in the field directly. And so for LUI, here we have um, what is this? From the twelfth bit onward, I guess we should have um, what we should do is we should have decoding routines or yeah and i think we're going to make them let me see here can we come can we factor it out using probably do some of that factoring using these classes to be honest but for now let's just put it into functions for the decoding um and then we'll we'll see if there's a good way to refactor according to the opcode map but um so, so let's say dec uh, decode, um, so this is u, right? Decode u instruction. Um, this should get it inlined. Um, famous last words. Or maybe there's another. Do we want to do it like this? I wonder. Let's just do it. Um, let's do it like that. And then we say this is LUI. And this is the data. Okay, and then add UI PC. This is not the same number of bits. Did I get an extra set? And not the right ones here. Yeah, it looks like we got an extra one. Um, decode U instruction and uh, AUI PC data. And again, not going to try to factor out according to the opcode map similarities. Let's just get it in there for now. So um, this one is decode. So this is the J type. K A L R. Well, I guess at this point we don't really know if that's what we have. Let me think about the best way to structure this. So these are fully determined by just their opcode bits. These require us to look at the function three bits. Um, what's the best way to structure that? I could do... I mean, it could, you know, of course, I can just do a branch, right? Um, but the question is whether there's a better way to do that. Um, I 
let me um, um, let me break out these fields up here just for convenience. So. Might as well break out these as well. Um, all right. Let me label these just so I can see at a glance what I'm dealing with. Um, if function three is equal to then it's an I type. Yeah. And I think what I'm going to do is um, you can actually leave it initialized to zero since int that's int intentionally the legal state. Um, so if we fall through, that just means it gets illegal, marked as illegal, which I think is nice. Um, and then we have all of these guys, which are the branch instructions. Um, and for those, we will do a, well, I think we won't do a secondary branch. We'll use a decode table. Um, and so what we'll do is we'll say, maybe I'll do it like this. And then I'll say up is LUI. Uh, up is AUIPC. Um, and then for this, we will do decode, I guess it's B, right? B instruction. Data. Um, but then we will, for the op, we will do um, branch op. Let's see. And I will um, I will create a table, which I guess will be like what's it going to be? Um, How wide is it going to be? I guess up to eight entries, right? If it's three bits. Um, so that's BEQ, and we need how many of these? One, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, LT. G E L T U G E U one two three four five six um, and this is 
one. And so again, this is where having the illegal op B0 works out very nicely um, because the default initialization, zero initialization from this table means that if you if you hit this case and it goes through, then uh, things are still good. Let me just stub in these, uh, or not stub them in, but let's, um, Let's just put in dummy implementations so we can compile the code incrementally. Uh, do we really have to? Uh... Go fix the compiler. <laughs> um, undeclared identifier. All right. Sorry, one quick digression. Must have broken something. Risk five op. Oh, it's because. Sorry, let, let me just fix that since, uh, well, it's easy enough to. Uh, I know what it, I know what it is. Oops. It's related to some of my. Wait, why don't I have a build event? All right, sorry, let me just go and look at that quickly. Um, full gen should, it's mark reachable, it should always be. It's some of my tree shaking stuff interacting with the type info. Actually, there's an easier way. I don't want to mess around with this. Let's just disable the type info. I don't need it right now anyway. Rather than doing full gen. All right, um, so where were we? We have this decoding thing. Why is it giving me squigglies? All right, anyway. Um, so let's just recap what we did. We could do this stuff in the same way, actually. 
Um, you can always unconditionally decode stuff. So let's just follow that pattern. But in this case, let's just Maybe do it like that just to keep the format more uniform for the code. Um, so the loads all have the same opcode. And this is. And uh, this is a. A I, right? I type instruction. And this would be also a func three. So func three to load up. Um, so we need another table like this. This one has five. Zero is LB. One is LH. This is W. Just double check that. Zero LB LH zero zero one zero one zero so W one zero zero so that's wrong one zero zero LB U zero one zero zero one zero what is it one zero one I was thinking the right thing saying the wrong thing all right um something like that there should be something for stores but a little bit simpler this would be sbshsw oh and i guess it's also a different instruction format right because it doesn't have a destination operand, so this is S type, S4 store, I suppose. So, another table. And this is 000, zero, zero for SB, SH, SW. So, this is zero, 01. Zero, zero, 001. Wait, so this was all right. Just kind of. All right. Um, and we also need something here. Um, Then we have all the, let's see, these are the immediate ALU operations, but no, it's not just the immediate. It's the, all the ALUs and they're distinguished by a bit and the func three, whether they're immediate or not.
just going to make this list here, even though it's long and maybe not the most easy to spot things absent in, but let's just leave it like that for my own sanity. And um, you can see there's kind of a three-way breakdown in terms of the format beyond this. Like there is the I-class things. Um, and then there are the shift style, shift immediate style things, which cannibalize RS2 as the shift amount rather than using a normal immediate field. And, um, and then you have the register register operands, which are their own third class. And so, Oh no, there is. I thought there was an extra bit. But yeah, that, that's why I was confused. I could have sworn the opcode itself gave you that info. Yeah, so there's a one here. So this is not the same at all. So all of these eyes, right? Sorry, that, that's what I thought. That's why I was confused. Um, so there's two cases. Um, I think probably the way to do this. Well, let's see. So all the all the normal ones share up to up to here. They're all shared. Let me just zoom in so I don't miss anything. So these are the same up to here. And then they are distinguished by funct. So maybe we maybe for this we will do a second level dispatch. So funct three to let's call it. Um, Funk three to M up, and it's going to be like so zero 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 is at I. Um, this is. Um, sorry, like th this is the kind of thing that actually makes my blade brain, uh, my brain bleed uh, with all these numbers and my diminishing eyesight, I suppose. Uh, well, and also I'm on a 14-inch monitor, so there's a limit to. Uh, anyway, so uh, XRI, so let's see, zero 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 is add I. 010 is SLTI, 011 is SLTIU, 100 is XRI, 110 is ORI. Um, this is AND I, and um, and then we get to um, so this is R R L. Or no, what is it? Yeah, R L and R A, 
and these are 010. Oh, and these are both that, and then they're further distinguished by Funct7. Um, so we need a further decoding for those. I'm going to put this here, and I'll, I have an idea for how to structure this, which is um, let's make sure that in this table all of these come after these, and so we can do a greater than check, which is a little bit dirty. Um, Funk three to m op if op is greater than uh, and i. So in this case, we decode an i instruction. Um, Maybe these upper, let's see. Let's see if these are shared for the, no, they're not. So let's just do it that way. Um, And so we, we can't do that purely on the upper. It's only but we have to validate that this is the case. Okay. So maybe we'll do this a little bit more um, manually. So if we get SLI, then we're going to say func7, if that's zero, I'm just going to make it very explicit to follow this format. Uh, so seven seven zeros. Then we get that else we get zero. or legal out. Um, if we get this, which is also this, um, then I don't know if we want to use a table for that. Maybe let's do it like this. Um, all the other bits have to be zero, 
That's one way of expressing that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Um, so if any of these are non-zero, then there's an illegal up. Otherwise, um, if it's equal to this, we have let me write it like a normal person. No, we just write like that, yeah. Um, Don't know if that's the best thing, probably not, but um, yeah. let me just write this in the same format so to keep the uniformity. It's going to synthesize to the same thing anyway. So generic code like that. Um, I mean, these, these subsidiary encodings could be moved to tables, but um, let's keep it like that. Um, so that's it for the immediate instructions. Then you have, you have these fence things, which are pretty specialized. Um, Maybe I want something called fence mask um, just to be able to do that easily. So if I do hmm. I guess I can't ignore those. Actually, this is a good opportunity to put something into the lexer that someone had proposed so that we can read this stuff without uh, breaking our eyeballs. 
Um, maybe I already put it in. I can't actually remember. So it thinks we're still inside an expression. Um. What was I going to say here? All oh, right. Um, this should the thing I just put in will allow us to put in where are the masks. Maybe we won't actually need it, but um, let's see if it works. Let me just test it quickly to make sure it actually works uh, as expected. It decodes to the right value. So. That does work. Let's just negative test it. Yep. Um, unfortunately, the C syntax highlighter does not like that very much. All right, best way to decode this. Um, we have to make sure that these fields are zero. So let's make that fence mask. And that mask consists of the RD mask So these bits, not these bits. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Uh, not those bits. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. And I guess not these either. These have already been decoded. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Just remove the compiler so we don't have to rebuild it. Um, then, when we decode a fence, we will say um, if data fence mask equals zero.
you know, I'm not going to decode these. Um, So let's just do a hard-coded decoding of that. And then for this, um, and in that case, I guess we need uh, these to also be one. So we can do a comparison on them. And basically want this pattern here. Um, I guess this is this pattern, but without one by the way as it's as it's hopefully becoming evident this encoding that they use is not designed to make it easy for software this is actually way easier to express in Verilog where you can use wildcard wild switches on bits and stuff like that um, but we have, unless we wanted to do this as literally a big if-else then chain, which would be too too obscene to, to contemplate seriously, um, you often get into f fun stuff like this. Um, fence I. Did we ever handle, we didn't handle the normal arithmetic ops. Let's return to that. Um, Um, and these all have uniform instruction format, even the shifts, because now we don't have this weird shift immediate being five bits encoding trick. So this should just be a matter of doing another uh, table. Although in this case, now I guess it's not quite true because we have a mixture of these. We could make the these into a combined 10-bit table, which is a little bit big for something so sparse. Um, because almost all of these are zero. So basically, you can see all of them are zero except for one bit, which in some cases is used to distinguish sort of a a variant of the same operation. So add and sub are sort of variants of the same operation in this encoding. Uh, lo logical and arithmetic right shift are variants. Um, so I think. the best way to encode that. Well first let's do just func3 to um, 
to reg op, let's call it. And uh, Now, the, the other thing we could do is we could just make this part, um, we could make a 4-bit key and then check that all the other bits are 0. So this is the bit, second highest bit. Let's call it func4. Um, So this would be add, and this would be sub. Um, so SLT SLT U they both have that zero bit. So SRL, like SRL, oh, so that's shift right logical. So we have the FRL, right? So this one has zero, and then the next one has one. Oops. these this is or and 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 so um One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I have to shift that down from position six, five, four. So that's One over, two over, yeah. Actually, let me, let me split that out.
Um, Let's call this mask. Um, then you want to say Funk Seven Mask, um, or the complement. If this is zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, zero. All right, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Then we do lookup. Otherwise, we have an illegal op. Actually, let's not do that. Don't worry. Um, if like seven. Oh man, this is some draining work to sit down and do. Um, but let's finish it. We're almost there with the decoder, hopefully. So this is e call and e break. Um, so here, let's say the mask we want the mask we want is all of these bits. Um, except that one. It's the complement of this. Back to the beginning before I start screwing with it. Let's actually put these in. Should have left them in up here too. I'll do a pass on that later. So uh, this is the mask. Let's call it like that. And then you say if funct if If data, if there's anything in the complement, actually, we, we don't have to express it like that. We can say if this is zero and we just have it implicitly be illegal like we do before. So, similarly, here, if this is zero, then. Um,
guess since you have to do two branches anyway. At least if you don't use a table for the decoding. All right, home stretch, CSR instructions. Oh, right, these are actually all the same lab code. I forgot about that. Um, So we should do some fancier decoding, unfortunately. All right, this is the weird, another shift amount kind of immediate situation. We have this very small immediate. Um, let's defer that for now to another function. All right, we've written a bunch of code. Um, we probably won't have, uh, I think this is a good stopping point even though I can't really test anything right now. Um, I also need to write these uh, instruction format specific types of decoding routines, which should be significantly easier than this mess. It's less ad hoc, it's just a straight line code. Um, but yeah, uh, now you see the fun of dealing with stuff that's designed for machine decoding in a software decoder. Uh, and this could definitely be done better, but um, 
this will probably improve over time, but this is kind of what I could come up with on the spot. And more or less what I've done in the past for RISC-V. Uh, a little bit different. Um, so I think I'll continue in the extra stream. Uh, and uh, let me do QA first, and then we'll cut over, over to the extra stream. But yeah, this was pretty grueling work. This is kind of data entry. And there's bound to be a bunch of mistakes, of course. Uh, and I'm not going to rely on getting things right. I'm going to test with existing binary images that are known to be like that are generated by other tools so i can validate the correctness of this um so yeah it's not going to be correct in the first pass all right let's see what people were saying earlier Dun, dun, dun. Just quickly scroll through, see if I missed anything. Uh, earlier, someone was asking, why do you think C is preferred over C++ for system level programming when C++ has more features than C? It depends on what you mean by systems level. For game programming, some people like the extra features. If you're writing a kernel, the, f the features have very marginal added value, and you want things to be explicit. And C++ encourages code that is concise in a way that tends to blow up in code generation, which if you're trying to control exactly what you're... Uh, your code is doing is not great. So I think broadly the answer is that systems programmer prefer generally systems programmers generally prefer things to be explicit, even if it means a bit more typing, like manual typing, not static typing, I mean. Um, let's see here. All right, um, let's see. So Sean's asking if having bit fields in the language would make instruction decoding cleaner. I think what would actually make things cleaner is intrinsics for, like even just having intrinsics for doing bit slicing. And you could write the functions manually, but having functions that let you operate on fields directly, I think would go a long way rather than having to do shifting and masking kind of uh, separately and whatnot. I think that's what I was planning on having eventually, just in the standard library, but then they can, they can be implemented as intrinsics with guaranteed implementation that's efficient or whatever. Um, all right. Anyway, uh, I'm going to cut over to the extra stream. I mean, like this is going to be awkward for a while until we have a way to test things, right? Um, but this is just how it goes when you're starting on something like this. So uh, uh, this is about taking. This is going about as how, my, how how this is about as painful as I was anticipating, which it always is. But uh, but anyway, I'll cut over to the extra stream. Although I need to get before I start recording again, I will need to get a a drink. But uh, I'll keep the stream running. So I'll be back in a sec. <laughs> 